Morning folks, I'm up in our yacon bed this morning and I'm going to harvest another one of our yacon plants. We've not actually taken any yacon out of the ground since before our last heavy frosts. Uh, so we don't know how it's getting through the weather. And we've actually got some more hard frost due for the next few days. So I'm going to pull some out now so we can start the curing process inside, which ensures we've always got some sweet, sweetened yacon ready to eat. We're going to check how the plants are doing and then I'm going to take you for a look over in our other yacon bed and explain what's been happening there. Okay, so we've got a couple of good sized plants here. And you can see we have already mulched all of these plants with a really good wood chip layer. And we did that in our last Yakon video back a few months ago. So you can check that one out if you haven't already. But what I'm going to do first is just chop these sticks down because that makes it easier to harvest. And also we use these sticks afterwards for a little bit of extra mulch chop and drop on top. And then we'll see if I can get this smaller one out to start with. Come on Murph's over here with me. Come on boy. Bramble wheat there. So there's lots of roots near the surface here. I can't see, there's one tube where I can see that it looks a bit black. We'll see what we find as we go down. So yeah, what we do is just loosen the soil from around the tubers as much as possible until we can start kind of wiggling them out because we don't want to snap the tubers if we can help it. But this is a pretty big plant and by the looks there's some absolutely massive tubers on here which fortunately for the frosts are down really deep but that does make them a little bit harder to get out. But at least that means that the frost shouldn't have gone down far enough to get at them, which is perfect. That's what we want. And that's why we give them such a good mulch. So maybe see if I can get a couple of these big tubers off. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I think we're only gonna need to get this one plant out. All right, there's one, there's one small tuber. <laughs> so this end of the bed as well, we're finding um, the tubers are a lot bigger on the plants at this end because if my memory serves me right, we didn't actually get round to harvesting these last few plants this year and they have grown so much bigger for it. So there's a little tip if you want to get a really good harvest of yacon, recommend leaving the plants in for an extra year before you do your first harvest. Oh my gosh, here we go, here we go. I really hope this is on the camera because I can't actually see the camera screen because of the sunlight in my eyes. Look at those. Wow. They are some big tubers. And that has come out amazingly well. Really happy with that. Right, so I just start taking all the tubers from around the crown of this plant and uh, just knock off some of these big lumps of soil as we go. You can see this has gone right down into our clay base here. This is, this is our solid clay on these few tubers here. 
nice bit of clay nice nutrients from the clay for the plants as well as from all the compost so it's a really good soil to be on Sometimes these tubers just come away from the stem real easy, but yeah, sometimes it's best just to snip them with the secateurs at the neck so they don't get damaged. So this tuber here was quite close to the surface and this one's black on the side that was nearest the top. And so I expect this tuber will actually be no good inside, but We'll check it out and see, but that's why it's really important to have them down deep and have a really good mulch. And you'll have to excuse the noise, Dan's just over the other side doing some woodwork, so that's what you can hear. You can see there's a section of the growing tips, it's just literally wanted to come away from the plant, so that can be planted as its own plant now and regrow as a whole new, new one. Again, from our experience, like I was saying, um, definitely leaving these plants in an extra year has given us better yields. Um, and obviously it gives the growing tips, the um, crown, longer to develop. So we do now always try and put really good sized chunks back into the ground. Okay, here comes the big one. Let's see if I can get this off. I'm not sure where it's actually attached. Oh, so I've broken that one a bit, but look at the size of that tuber. It's immense, absolutely immense. And yeah, it doesn't appear to have any damage on the rest of these tubers from being right down deep. So. Nice thick mulch is definitely the key to looking after these. So I'm actually going to put that whole chunk back in the ground, I think. We'll replant that big stem. So let's get to it. I just put a little bit of loose soil down into the bottom of the hole that I pulled it out of and just cover it back up. Don't want to plant my secateurs. So let's get all of that soil back around the shack on. And you can see where we mulched these already. There's, there's quite a lot on there, but I will just get some extra wood chips and just give it a little top off as well, because like I say, we've got more frost coming. Today is the 5th of February. So February usually is our coldest month, but we've, um, We've had a cold December and January this year as well, so it's quite unusual. So yeah, really keen to look after these plants. And then I've just used the dead stems to mulch back on top as well to give a little bit more frost protection as well. So this yakon bed here is a bit of a different story. This bed we grew just in no dig compost style beds and it grew absolutely beautifully. We had the biggest plants we've ever had. It flowered for absolutely ages and we should have had an amazing harvest from this bed as well. But we thought we'd do a trial this year and leave this bed just with its compost layers. So a no dig, traditional no dig style compost layered bed and see if it made it through the winter just with the compost. Now, when we decided to do that, we didn't realize how hard a uh, winter we were gonna have this year. Normally uh, where we are, we're growing zone 9A and normally we only touch on minus five degrees, maybe usually right at the end of the winter, usually around now in February. We'll get a few other frosts, maybe around minus one, 
but we only usually go really low once if at all. So this winter has been a bit different. We're now heading into our third cold spell is due tonight. And we had in our first frost, it actually went down as low as I think minus seven, which is really unusual for us. So we did harvest some of these plants after the first lot of frosts, which lasted about seven to 10 days, I think, which again is a unusually long period of time for us. And a lot of the tubers or nearly all of the tubers had already gone bad inside. So it's a bit of a shame because this bed is mainly uh, the red variety of yakon that we have so it's got a really nice red skin and the flavor is slightly different slightly more honey-ish flavor but what we have been checking is the rhizomes and the rhizomes that are lower down in these plants all seem to be okay still so what i think is needed in this bed is to give it a tidy up. As you can see, there's some bramble coming in. There's even some rubbish over there. And then I'm gonna mulch all of these plants with more compost. So we're still not gonna actually wood chip this bed. We're just gonna mulch it and I'll chop and drop all of the stems. That will provide really good feed for the bed as it breaks down. And it will also help to give it a frost protection layer too. So yeah, I'm gonna get and give this bed a bit of a tidy up and then we'll see what it looks like afterwards. And this here is where the naughty pups have been helping themselves to one of their favorite snacks. They love a bit of yakon especially our hungry boy Murph. Check out all of the worms that I'm seeing in the compost. It's absolutely amazing. So that is this yakon bed tidied up and tucked up ready for the next spell of cold weather and it's been a really interesting exercise and I've noticed some um, some things that offer really good learning for us with the yakon going forward. So the whole of Freedom Forest is on quite heavy clay and clay is great because it is very nutritious and it does hold water but it also compacts really easily um, and it can be very soggy, which is one of the reasons why no dig works so well for us here, because it lifts the plant out from that sometimes claggy clay layer. Now on this bed where it was a new bed that went in and, and in all honesty, last year, it was a bit of a second thought. We just had loads of spare yak on and we thought we'd just plant some in this gap. So it didn't have as much compost as we've used in the past when we've started some of our main no dig beds. And what I noticed with some of the yakons that are still um, well in the ground, I think we would have really struggled to harvest the tubers anyway, because a lot of them had gone down into the clay, which makes it very difficult to harvest. And also because there wasn't very much no dig compost layer or, or other mulch layer, um, where it's been such a wet and cold winter, a lot of the tubers and the growing tips, the rhizome or crown, have actually rotted. And you can see like on this piece here, it's really wet and soggy and it's all been sat in the clay. And like I said, the clay would have been holding that water. 
So a really good observation and learning is that yacon grows really well on well-draining soil. And our other bed at the top where we started has been a no-dig bed for a good few years that we've been putting a lot of layers onto each year. And so the soil is just beautiful and loose and the tubers do often touch the clay and go down into it a little bit, but not very much. Whereas this shallow bed, it's not been so good for the yacon. Like I say, they grew beautifully, so they were definitely getting enough nutrients and everything to get the plants going. But in terms of harvest and certainly leaving them in the ground like we usually do and just harvest as we need, this bed is not well draining enough. So yeah, some really interesting stuff. We are still learning about yacon each year and how we can do things better in the garden. But we will give the yacon another try in this bed and where we've got some gaps, where we've lost some of the plants, we will fill those in with other growing tips that we harvest from our other bed as we pull out some more plants from there. And obviously the thing that we're going to take away from this is that we need to add more material to this bed to bring the no dig layer up more. And as you can see, I've used the stems to help protect the yacon plants from the frost and the cold weather. But what this will actually do over time and particularly with the cold is break down and also feed the bed and turn to compost and obviously feed the plants. And often it is said that the best food for a plant is the plant itself. So hopefully our yacon will benefit from that too. I really hope you've enjoyed this video today. More on our yacon, one of our favorite crops here at Freedom Forest. We love it. I'm gonna be going down and making some yacon chips, hopefully later on today. So maybe I'll report back to you on how those go. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, drop us comments down below. We love hearing from you and we will catch you here again soon. Peace and plants. <laughs>